Uh, my question would be, what is the essence of uh, the wisdom of the Kabbalah? That's it. What is the essence of Kabbalah? Well, there has been a lot of confusion, legend, myth, misinterpretation surrounding the true nature of Kabbalah because it's been shrouded in mystery for thousands of years. And it's called the hidden science for three reasons. One, in the past, Kabbalists taught only a few worthy, highly developed people from each generation who already possessed certain inner qualities not developed in humanity as a whole until recently. And these inner qualities allowed them to understand and use it correctly. So in the first place, it was purposely hidden by the Kabbalists themselves. Two, all Kabbalistic books are written in a way that uses words that seem to talk about people and things. But in fact, not a single word in any Kabbalistic book is talking about the physical world. And if you don't learn how to read these books from a Kabbalist in the authentic teaching lineage, you simply can't understand them. It doesn't matter how bright you are, all you're going to end up with is a product of your imagination and nothing else. And three, Kabbalah reveals the purpose and the nature of this system that we call life. And unless a person has a powerfully real and serious need to ask this very question, they can't hear the answer, not even if it's shouted at them. But today, many people all over the world are seeking out Kabbalah. So let's clear up the misunderstandings. First, let's look at what Kabbalah is not. It is not and has nothing to do with religion, magic, mysticism, witchcraft, divination, cults, healing, meditation, self-help, philosophy, theory, parapsychology, ESP, telepathy, clairvoyance, new age, psychokinesis, superstition, dream interpretation, phrenology, tarot cards, mantra, yoga, red strings, holy water, blessings, Judaism, Islam, Christianity, Buddhism, Hinduism, Sufism, Anyism, past life regressions, holistic medicine, numerology, faith healing, aromatherapy, secret societies, Reiki hypnosis, channeling, transmutation, phrenology, astrology, astral travel, aura projection, lucid dreaming, spiritualism, communicating with the dead, out of body experiences, magnetism, voodoo, Freemasonry, philosophy, reflexology, UFO, creationism, fanaticism, or any other belief. <sighs> Although many of the above mentioned have borrowed and misinterpreted the principles of Kabbalah over the years. So now, what is it really? Kabbalist Yehuda Ashlag defines Kabbalah this way. The wisdom is no more and no less than a sequence of roots which hang down by way of cause and effect in fixed, determined rules, weaving into a single exalted goal described as the revelation of his godliness to his creatures in this world. Which means that there is an upper force, and then there are governing forces that descend from this upper force and bring about our existence in this world. We're familiar with physical forces such as gravity, electromagnetism, and even the power of thought, but there are forces of a much higher order that act while still remaining hidden to us. Just like we know the effects of electricity, but we can't see it and we don't know exactly what it is. The ultimate comprehensive force, the creator, is the sum of all of the world's forces and the highest level in the line of higher governing forces. And this upper force gave birth to five worlds and a barrier separating them from our world. Now the science of Kabbalah doesn't study our world and the people in it the way traditional science does. It investigates everything that exists beyond that barrier. And there is nothing other than the forces that descend from above in accordance with these laws. And the laws, as Ashlag writes, are fixed. They, they are absolute and they are everywhere. And ultimately, they are all directed so that we can reveal the governing force of nature while we still exist in this world. Okay, so that's the big picture.